Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel here in Monmouth County, New Jersey today. And I met up with Duke. Duke has a really cool 1989 vintage RV camper. And he's going to give us a tour today inside and out. Hello, Duke, and welcome to New Jersey Outdoor Adventures. How's it going? Thank you for having me. This is a Class C 1989 Chevy Fleetwood Jamboree. The chassis is a Chevy Van G30 with a small block 350, 5.7 liter V8. Yeah, she's pretty perfect. Come on inside, check her out. The story about how I got my hands on this kind of fell into my place. I obtained it from a company I used to work for, bought it from them. As soon as I saw it, I am super old school, super old soul. I love this thing. It was so beautiful, very mint and I just had to have her. And me and my buddy were, let's do this. We're gonna do the trip that we've been talking about for a while. And that's what the key thing to it was at all. It was like, this is it. Like we were just so happy to have her. And it was just, it, everything just came together full circle and it felt so right. And that just motivated us to like, let's redo it and let's get on the road. And it was just the best experience of my entire life. As you can see here, pretty modernized. Um, the first thing we kind of did with all the water damage was rip out the whole entire ceiling. And that was the start of the whole restoration process. It came from redoing the ceiling to redoing the back walls to redoing all cushions completely. Counters completely redone to our standing. Floors, all the rug completely ripped out. The floors all nice snap hardwood that we, we redid. Up top here, we got the first bed. This is a queen size bed. You come here, you can pull this out, take off the ladder a little bit. Set that over here. This all new carpet, all new plywood on here, all new wall, uh, wall paneling, cause that was all um, water damage as well with some, the blackout curtains. You would come here, pull this, these cushions, original foam, all redone fabric. That easy, hook up the ladder. And that's bed number one up here. Super comfortable, queen size. Windows all work with the new blackout curtains. That for air, really, really convenient. Really, really nice when you're by a nice spot like the beach with the wind coming in. This window too, same thing. Come back here. Once again, get the full breeze coming through here. Then you also got this for when it's time to go. Going to bed. See ya out, nice privacy curtain. Very, very convenient when you're on the road with a, a buddy of yours and you guys want some of your own privacy, throw the curtain and uh, pretty much have your own space up here. A lot of space, completely pushed out. You can easily fit two people up here and had my mattress topper up here when I was on my trip and it was just like at home. It was absolutely unbelievable and very, very comfortable. Put the cushion up, slide it back and you're ready to go to hit the road. Come down here, all original uh, dash, absolutely beautiful. Original window cranks with the old school vent windows, which are just, you don't see these anymore. And these are just actually awesome. Get the airflow and come in here. Turn the key. You got that old school backup camera, which is just, oh, it's so nice. Very convenient. It's awesome with this thing. Love that. Come here, GPS. For all those when you're somewhere with no connection, that's gonna get connection everywhere out. You'll never get stopped anywhere. Flip here. Got the charging port with your phone charger and all that nonsense. You have your little center console for that with the cup holders. Come here. Original 1989 bucket seats with the full swivel. These are just super convenient, especially when you're hanging out somewhere and you can have another person sitting and very, very nice. I love these a lot. We're gonna come here. Now this is the full bath. Very nice, full shower, full toilet. There's a brand new toilet that we put in. Everything like that. Ceiling fan. So if you wanna come in here, you can open up the vents. Switches down here. Got the fan for that. Full storage for all your needs, towels, uh, brushes, shampoo, anything down there you would like. 
sink was original sink with the new faucet with the brand new countertops that we made handcrafted with the subway tile that we put in. Um, everything works awesome. Down here, same thing with all, all your needs, all your essentials that can go in there. Come back here. The original shower, which is pretty much in mint condition with a brand new head. Turn those on, crank that, switch it up a little bit. Works absolutely awesome. Now this, the shower and the sink water goes to the gray water tank. The toilet goes straight down to the black water tank that's right down there. And uh, yeah, both, I believe the black water tank is 10 gallons, the gray water is 30 gallons, and you have a 40 gallon fresh water tank that all that was used off shore power with the water pump. We're gonna come here, this is the kitchen table, the kitchenette, that also goes to a bed. Back here, if you open up this storage, what you have, this is where your water tank is going to sit. That is the 40 gallon water tank, which you have the hookup from the outside. That is your potable water that is drinking and also what you use with a water pump when you want to do your shower and your bathroom needs. So the cushions, original foam from the original, we did the wrap and tack method, which was using original foam, getting really, really good affordable uh, canvas. This is called duck canvas, which is very good, durable. Really thin sheet of plywood glued onto the back of the foam, uh, stainless steel staples, and they are absolutely unbelievable. I would recommend anybody doing that if they're trying to do any type of cushions in anything. This table, also handmade, really nice pine, wall, American walnut stain with polyurethane. This table actually comes up, push the button here, push it all the way up. You will slide this down to here. Like that, these cushions, drop, these cushions, drop. And now you have your twin size bed, very comfortable sleeping. Average size adult like me, more than comfortable sleeping area. This is actually unbelievable and uh, really good for younger kids, anything like that. You come up here, this is your three cabinets of storage, which me and my buddy that we just went on the trip with, we put it in a shelf for all our clothes. We had, you know, your shirts, your pants, all here. We had two bins for our socks and our underwear here. And we had more than enough room for any type of clothing that you could possibly need. This is a really good storage for clothing. This is basically your drawers. You come up here. This is where your fire extinguisher will be if God forbid something did happen, which luckily nothing ever did happen to us because we watched every leak in here. And then this is for the crank, for the antenna, for the cable, which would come down here. This is where you hook up with your cable. You have another uh, 12 volt outlet here and then two outlets here for your plugs. This brand new thermostat that we put in for the furnace. So you would turn on the propane, set this to the temperature you would like, turn on the heat. Thing works awesome, set it to any temperature. As soon as it, get, it gets that high, it will turn off. Once it drops below that, it will crank right back on. Awesome furnace, everything works perfectly. Up here, you got your full AC, which we'll crank on right now. This is for all your good needs when you're somewhere with warmer weather. Uh, you have your temperature gauge here, which is on cold. You have your high, low, cold, low fan, high fan. This works unbelievably well. It gets the whole RV completely freezing cold. So this works off when you're hooked up to shore power only. So you have to be hooked up to shore power with that and or if you plug in a generator, then it'll be able to work. This will not work off of the 50 uh, dV uh, direct voltage from that battery. But this, when you're hooked up to shore power using the generator, this is how you run this uh, AC unit. Right here, you got your full closet with the with the mirror. A lot, a lot of storage in here. You have the hooks for your hangers. This is a lot of extra stuff we just have going with the hardwood floor that we put in here too for a little detailing as well. You got extra drawers in here, which we had a bunch of tools and a lot of stuff that we needed. This is kind of our tool bin. This is where your furnace is back here. And then you have that one more extra storage that you kind of put your, um, we put our duster pan in there, so we want to sweep it up and all that. Not a lot of space in there, but definitely somewhere, something good for that. Now we're gonna to come to here, to the full kitchen. This is the original stove, which was awesome in mint condition. To run this stove with the propane on, you're gonna pull this up. This is a really good safety valve. You're gonna turn on the pilot, so now we're gonna get gas flowing to the pilot. You're going to manually light it. 
come down, push it back, and just the simple turn of that, all these will turn on, and that's that's how you run your stove. It's it's very very easy, and it's good that it's manual. When you're running the stove, you have all, this is your control panel up here, so you have your hood. The fan that goes out, so when you're cooking anything like that, high and low. You have your hood light, which also goes, but we have the one LED here. To go with that, we put up another uh, carbon monoxide smoke detector up here, just for if anything were to happen, smoking and all that, you would know that for sure. You have your extra, extra window here, so if you're cooking anything also, go and open up those. We are going to come up here. This was obviously meant, you have an outlet in there that is meant for a microwave. If you don't want to use a microwave, which is kind of a waste of space, we use for all our plates were up here, all our pots and pans were here, all our cups were up there. It was very, very good space, a lot of convenient, nothing banging. Come down to the full stove, open it up. Works phenomenally. Also, you have to manually light it. This is where we would cook, you know, bake some cookies, bake anything like that and even toast bread. I mean, if you're off grid and you want to use, you don't can plug in for a toaster, throw your bread in here and it's awesome. Come down here, extra storage, which we had some of that. This is not much space, but this is the wheel well. So you can also stick some extra stuff up there when you need it to. The sink, once again, all new counter. This is a handmade cutting board we have. Little greetings from the Jersey Shore. Same thing with the sink, double side it. So you have, you know, dirty plates here, wash them in here. Works awesomely. Come down, your two drawers. You got your forks, your knives, your spoons. Second drawer, your spatulas, all the all those needs with all this new mesh in there so nothing's gonna be sliding, anything like that. Your under sink compartment, where you have all your sink needs. You have your little garbage can with all your engine needs. Just a really good storage for all those stuff for under sink. This is your control paneling for your battery and all your fuses for the inside of the home that run off that back battery. So when we're hooked up to shore power right now, this is gonna control all the lights, everything else, all those water pumps and all that. So if something blows, these are the fuses that you would put into here, which we had blowed the fuse when we put that new LED lights in. My buddy's like, we did something. I was like, nope, it's just a fuse. Now we come back to the bed over here. We're gonna get some more storage area like the other side. Now this is where we would keep our hose for when we're hooked up to city power or city lines. We would put our hose in here, which is in a bag, just in case for leaks. We have a, there's a filter on that hose for, um, to purify the water if we were just taking water from any type of uh, hose outlet. Also, awesome storage that goes into the same compartment from this side, which was really good for shoes. We had about like seven pairs of shoes in here and all that. Also the seat belts, which we didn't have at the time, but these are where the seat belts would come through, through these holes and you can pull them up, which this seated area is actually meant for four. So you got four sets of seat belts, two on this side, two on that side. Fridge, original paneling. We just put up that, um, a little bit of that, that silver sticker to kind of give that stainless steel look to mo with the everything modernized. You come in here, full kitchen, actually very big, very big. You are going to either use it off of the electric option or you would turn it and go to the gas option. You follow the instructions, same thing off the propane. You would have to manually light it from the outside, which we will show you in a little bit. You would come up here, same thing, with a full freezer. And especially when you're off grid, a really good way to keep everything cold, but if you're not using propane and or power, you put ice in here and these things work like the best coolers you will ever have. And that's what me and my buddy were doing when we we're on the road. You have your full pantry, which we still got some stacks in here from the road. A lot, a lot of storage in here. It's actually a little bit too much storage because you just don't know what to put in here. There's so much space, which goes along with the three sets of drawers, which you could also use as clothes or anything where we had all games and could have possibly had anything in here. But once again, it was just two of us on the trip. So it was very hard to even fill up these spots when we tried to. But once again, this RV is meant for basically a five person family. Here, more storage under here which is a bunch of RV stuff, extra stuff that goes along with the RV, just in case you would need it. And last storage bin, which is, this is probably one of the biggest under storage spaces there is, where I fit about six bags of tools I in, had in here, just in case anything were to happen on the road. And this is a really, really good storage space, which your water pumps down there. So back here, you have your couch, which turns to the last bed. And this is considered a shortfall. To do this, very simple. Pop one cushion here. Next cushion, 
here. There is this pulley here that comes all the way out, just like that. These two cushions are gonna slide back. It's kind of like a puzzle, but it's fun. Bang like that, last cushion. Oh. Bang, that cushion there, that cushion there. And now you have the third bed, which you can see how long it is. It is huge, which can fit two people very comfortably as well. Which back window here, this is the emergency exit. If something were to happen, that comes all the way out. Emergency exit. This window, same thing. You got those, those crank vents. Open all the way up. The speakers, original speakers, which back here is when I'm driving my friends around, they cannot believe how nice the speakers are back here. All original speakers, they just absolutely love it. It, it, sounds, the, the, it sounds so, so good back here. We actually had to rip out all the counters that were up there. There was all different, there was all cabinets around this whole entire thing. Me and my buddies and my dad decided it's gonna be a better option to completely cut them out to get it efficiently done for the ceiling, to rip out the ceiling. We ripped out the old wood, the old insulation. We put brand new foam insulation with the brand new paneling, everything. And this was the best option I think we made because how much better it looks open. You have so much more space in here. You have all new framed out. So if you would like to put up the mesh nets, you can. And we never had stuff fall. There's a little lip right here. We had this whole entire area filled with bags and bins and all the stuff we had. Biggest question would, how do you guys drive without stuff falling? It, it simply didn't. You have it kind of up there packed together and this little lip, nothing ever fell. Let's go check out the outside. So that was the inside. To open up, to close this door up, there's this little latch right here. Very simple, hook. Another little pulley, just like that. And now you got your screen door. Keep it up when you're by the beach. Have the windows open, have that open. Very, very convenient and very, very nice. Here is where your potable water goes. You would uh, grab your key. And that's that. Open up, open up the, uh, and that's where you fill up your potable water that fills up that 40 gallon tank that I was talking about on the inside. And that's where you use your water pump and you have your drinkable water and all your faucets. Up here is where I have your light. If you come in here, there's one more switch. This is your outside light. This is your propane which I kind of rigged up a little bit, but it works very well. It's there used to be a solenoid valve here. We put in our own manual valve that this is on, that's off. So you would turn it on back. Here's where the switch is. You twist that your propane's on when it's time to shut it off, turn off the flow to the inside appliances. That's the most important part. And then you would completely turn off your propane and it's very convenient. This is a good option because it used to be electrical um, solenoid valve switch. Now we did it to manual where you can be off grid and use the propane. You can use your heater, you can use your furnace, you can use the stove, you can use your water heater. It's, it's very good to be off the grid and being able to use your propane like that instead of having to use any type of electric with it. Here is more outlets for when you're outside hooked up to shore power or generator. You're gonna have outlets out here. This is a switch to drain your potable water tank from the inside. You would turn it and the potable water would drip out. So that's how you drain that tank instead of using it through the faucets. This is the outside to your fridge for when you have to manually light it if you want to use the propane for it. That's that. Back here is the, uh, that is actually the pilot back there. So we'd use the long lighter. Have my buddy hold the pilot and you would light the pilot. The tank for the fluids back there, that's what heats it up and allows it to get cool. Here, this is storage container number two. Your jacks, your sockets for the tires, got Vanunia flat. You have some chop blocks if you have to level out your car if you're somewhere else. Clip here for to hold it up. So when you're trying to work back there, you need to hold it up. This is your water heater, which you would also manually do. Come here, very, very simple. You have to make sure you run a little bit of the hot water from the inside and make sure the tank fills up. Hold it on the pilot. You would light the pilot switch. You wait about 30 seconds and then you slowly turn it on and this shoots out like a flame and it basically just is boiling the water tank until it gets hot. 
lasts about, depending on what temperature you're in, it is about 35 to 45 minutes of fully heat up and it will stop when it's done. Use a hot water and leave it on. Once it, it get, drains a little bit, it'll crank right back up. And you wait about that, you have about five minutes of hot water of the full tank, which is more than enough time to shower in an RV, especially when you're on the road. This is storage container number one, which we have here. This is where we have our extra battery. We have our, our cord with our 30 amp conversion. We converted the electrical cord to extension cord so it would be easier to plug into basically anywhere we had to. And we also have the extension for this. So if you were somewhere like an RV park that had a 30 amp, you could plug it into here and then use a 30 amp. 100 foot extension cord was the best thing we could have possibly done because we've been in places where there was no electric and we just ran the 100 foot cord into a, a random outlet somewhere and we had power to run the furnace to run our uh, charge our stuff and it was definitely the most convenient thing. It was probably the best thing we probably did for this thing. We also have some chairs or tents. I have my snowboard back there. This is goes all the way back to the other side of the RV about eight foot and this is more than enough storage for anything you could possibly need for the RV. This is the back side of the RV. This is the window for the emergency exit that came out. You have the extra gutter that we put up for rain, so no rain would ever get in the inside of the window. We had a little bit of leakage from the start. That has helped tremendously. You have the, that's the backup camera that we showed you before. We have the hitch receiver here, which can, believably, it's, it's regulated to tow a car, which when we went on the trip, we had a huge floating tray that we put a bunch of stuff on. You have your bumper, your spare tire with the brand new tail lights. The other side of the bumper is where you, that is your, black water hose and gray water hose that you would hook up to your uh, external port. This is where the generator is. Pull it up here. This is where we'd keep our gloves for when we're using the, uh, the hose and all that stuff. This is the generator that we had not got running yet, but we will soon. Um, we brought an external generator on the trip, but this is in great condition. We just never had time to work on it. The generator, completely original. Every part is original on here. So these are something really good to have uh, your hands on for sure. Here is where you can see we had rigged up our, our converter to a 30 amp, 30 amp to a 20 amp. So we had the extension cord port. So you bring that external extension cord and you could basically plug it into anywhere. And that was probably the greatest option we did. This is the, the gas tank cap with the lock because you never know what people are trying to do on the road. So you've always got to make sure you lock this. Never, you don't want to lose gas. This is your city water that you would hook up the hose into a, a city port. When you turn that on, this has its own pressurized system. So plug it in, turn on any hose, and you will have water in the RV. And it, that is really good for your RV parks or have anywhere to be able to hook up the water. This is your furnace. When the furnace is running, this is gonna be really, really hot. So you come out here to check to make sure the furnace is going and you'll know you're getting hot heat in there. This is just an extra port for the bathroom. This is the port for your black and gray water tank. Left side, the bigger one is going to be your black water, which is right under the bathroom where the toilet is. And this is going to be your, your gray water, which is the full tank down there. And then the other tank is here. So you would hook up the hose. First thing you do is you pull your black water, let that drain out, and then pull your gray water, which your old shower water, your, your dish soap and all that, and that will clean your hose right out. And that's the best possible way to do it. So if you come here, a lot of people don't know about this. In the older RV homes, you actually have this emergency start here. So if God forbid something happened to your chassis battery and your back battery, the house battery is charged, you actually use the house battery to help start this. And a lot of times it says that you use this anyway to give it an extra boost to start. So this is something really good to know about and something, if God forbid something were to happen and your battery were to die, you know you can use the back battery to help start this RV. That is something really, really good to know. Also with these old RVs, when it comes to the rims and tires, a lot of them have half inch rims and tires. When I first got this thing, it had 16 and a half inch rims and tires on it which they mostly don't make anymore and if you were to go get the tires they are double triple the price of a regular tire so the best option to do is what i did was go to a scrapyard junkyard try to find if i got lucky enough to find a pair of six set of these eight lug pattern rims for this chevy got the rims from got a, got brand new tires for the fronts got used brand new newly used tires for the back and I changed them myself and that was the best option that you could have done because God forbid something happened on the road like it did for me. I stopped short, got a flat spot on one of my tires. It was that much easier to get a new tire for this. I went to any regular place. It was a discount tire in Austin, Texas. 
in and out, brand new two front tires. And that was why we did that option because God forbid something happened on the road and we couldn't get the 16 and a half inch tires, we would have been pretty much pretty much in a, in a bad spot. So that was a good thing we did. Duke, thank you very much for taking the time to give us a tour inside and out in your 89 Jamboree. Can you share with our viewers, what was one of the biggest challenges that you had to overcome buying an older motorhome like this? So the biggest challenge that me and my buddy have faced was knowing there was water damage, but the extent of how bad it actually was. And especially in these old motorhomes, the tops of them go bad and there's leaks and you don't really realize how bad it is until you start going into it. You pull a little piece, wow, it's worse than I thought. It's actually a little bit more, it's a little bit more. Then it gets to the point that half the RVs ripped apart. You're like, we had to fix this water damage before anything. So that's probably single-handedly the hardest thing that we had to do. And then just little parts for the actual motorhome. A lot of things were discontinued and a lot of things. So it was a lot of, it's a lot, a lot of online research that we had to kind of overcome and really just get into depth and try to find these parts. And then when it comes to the engine wise, that was fine because it's a class C. So it was an old school engine, but all those parts were easy to find and doing the tune-ups before that was really, was really easy. And then the same thing with the tires was, that was a little bit hard to overcome. We got just extremely lucky being able to find the rims just like that and getting the tires on them. But that's something I would definitely do if I buy an older old uh, motorhome is change the tires to regular size so you never have a problem with that. And you gotta expect, even if you get it all squared away, things are gonna happen when you're exactly, on the road. Exactly, exactly. So you always have to prepare for things that happen on the road, especially when you're going for a long time. So you just gotta prepare and just not bring yourself down, kind of just stay positive and understand that, you know, you take care of her, she'll take care of you. So if she needs something done, just just do it and get it done. Do it right. Don't kind of just, you know, half half do stuff and and that's that. But you always have to expect things are never going to be perfect, especially for for an older vehicle. So that's something that we kind of prepared ourselves for. Kind of was like expecting things to happen, and they did, and we fixed them. But but that's that's just life, and that's something we had to just go with and experience. So I'm glad that happened and and everything with the trip. So and that's pretty smart. You started off with a vintage motorhome. You know, driving around a neighborhood or a residential street, you'll see a half a dozen of these on the side of someone's house exactly. that you could get for a pretty good budget. And I guess yeah. it's a matter of finding the right one exactly. and making sure it fits within your budget of the yep. renovation. And you can wind up putting fifteen, twenty thousand dollars into exactly. something like this. Exactly. Uh, but what what's next for you? I, this is uh, you just got done with your big trip and you're exactly. back. Yep so what's next we're on the road for 65 days we basically spent the last year doing this to prepare to prepare for that trip and what's next basically is we we want to sell her to someone who deserves her because we basically almost didn't even deserve her because she was so so good to us but someone who deserves her and we we want to do we want to get onto the next project we want to do it again we want to get a maybe another a little bit newer one but definitely going to stay with the older ones and try to start renovating older rvs because that's something we're really really passionate about and something we really enjoy doing well dude that's excellent news because i'll link to your social media account for this motorhome awesome, awesome. so our viewers can follow the process on your next awesome, renovation awesome. Awesome. thank you so much this is patrick with new jersey's outdoor adventures youtube channel hope you enjoyed this video please like this video comment share and subscribe i'd love it and we'll see you soon. Thank you, guys.